Did you know that most of the government, especially USA government, watches out for an ordinary person's secret like what he has sent, what he has downloaded or surfed? It's exceptionally vital for a typically individual to surf the web anonymously. In this video, we will discuss about the tools and ways that can be utilized to be anonymously. The first is Use private browsing modes. The first trick that any citizen of the web should learn is the use of private browsing modes in your web browser. In Google Chrome, for example, it's called incognito mode, but in other browsers, it may be called private browsing or something similar. It's important to understand that private browsing modes are actually not very private at all. They are, however, very useful for controlling the types of information stored on your local machine. It prevents your browser from logging your browsing history and doesn't add anything to automatic forms. It also stops websites from storing cookies, which is information that websites store on your computer so that they can use it later when you visit again. Just recently, we had a case of an online app using cookies to leak private data. The main reason you'd want to use a private browsing mode is to avoid having locally stored cookies on your computer. It's also a good way to see what websites would look like without access to your personal info. The second is, use VPN or virtual private network. A VPN or virtual private network encrypts everything you do on the internet, keeping you essentially anonymous on the internet. The general rule is that if you're using a solid VPN service, all of your internet activity will remain private. Using a VPN also prevents your ISP from seeing what you're doing online. However, many VPN servers do keep logs of your activities and can be subpoenaed in the event you're suspected of a crime. Although your ISP or other people on your local network can't see what you're doing when you're connected to a VPN, the VPN provider can. Unfortunately, there's no sure way to verify that a VPN provider doesn't log what you do on their service. Research VPNs thoroughly before selecting one. The third is, use Tor. The Tor web browser routes all of your traffic through its own network, making your web browsing virtually anonymous. When you browse through Tor, it's very difficult or not impossible, but close for your ISP, a network administrator, or a Wi-Fi hacker to see the websites you visit or the sites you sign into. Never download Tor from anywhere other than their website. If you don't want your ISP to know that you browse with Tor, you'll need to use it over a VPN. The fourth is, be careful what you post online. Privacy is about autonomy. The notion that you choose to share what you want to share and to keep private what you want to keep private. If there's something going on in your life you don't want the entire world to know about, then posting about it on social media for the entire world to see not be the best idea. There's a striking generational gap on this topic. Older generations cringe at the idea of airing their dirty laundry in public, while the generation that grew up with a cell phone welded to their palm thinks oversharing is normal. There's a time and place for everything. Deliberate sharing of things you want to the world to see clearly has value. Consider also that sharing a particular detail about your life may not appear sensitive on its own but taken in aggregate with many other shared personal details can build up a picture that you might hesitate to put onto a hostile internet. Publishing on social media today is more permanent than chiseling hieroglyphics in stone. Take a step back and consider the whole picture of what you're sharing. The fifth is, check those app permissions. We all have smartphones now and they tend to get filled up with apps that we try out and then forgot about. Not only that but when we're loading up a new app, how many of us stop to think about whether that joke app really needs access to our contacts, phone, and microphone. It doesn't matter that you've got a secure browser and a secure internet connection when you approve just any application to run in the background and watch what you do. So, access your application permissions and make sure that apps only have access to resources on your phone that make sense for their intended function, or what you actually use them for. It's also a good idea to delete any applications that you don't use anymore. Also, when apps update and they ask you to approve additional permissions, take the time to think about whether you really trust that application with those permissions. Your smartphone can be used to spy on you and figure out who you are and what you're doing. In fact, personal data sharing is so built into smartphone operating systems that if you really want maximum anonymity, then your only real option would be to ditch smartphones altogether. The sixth or last is, keep your email secret. 
Your email address is a big part of your online identity. It's also a valuable source of revenue for people whose business involves supplying spammers with live addresses. If the sites you register with aren't secure, hackers can access the database containing all the user credentials, and the email addresses are sure to be sold on. Sure, popular messaging services like Gmail use HTTPS and contain the SSL certificate used to authenticate and encrypt your messages, but that doesn't mean they're 100% private. Google's even admitted to reading user emails to better target ads. Thanks for watching this article so far. If you like these videos then please share them with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. If you have any questions or feedback then please drop a comment. And which is best for you, drop on the comment. Thank you for subscribing.